In this video, I'm going over six reasons people are stuck on Windows and five myths that people keep saying in the comments and other videos that just simply aren't true. You can do that in Linux, but let's go over the six actual things first. So let's jump right into this. The very first thing, so many people are tied into the Adobe Creative Suite. I know, I know what you're saying. You're going, well, there's Krita, there's uh, GIMP, there's all these other ones. They should just learn those and do that. Well, here's the problem, guys. You go to school for a couple years and some people have been honing their craft for an entire decade on one piece of software such as Photoshop or Premiere or After Effects. It's not that easy. Not only does it not give that full range of professional quality, you just can't make someone that's dedicated that much time and money just switch to a freeware software in Linux. It just doesn't happen. So that's the very first reason why uh, you're stuck on Windows. So the second reason, specialized hardware. Now, I want to be very specific here because there's a lot of misconception going, oh, well, it can't read my graphics card or it can't read this. I'm gonna call BS because almost every piece of standardized hardware out there works on Linux. However, there is some specialized software, and I just so happen to have some specialized software. Here's a nice Oculus Rift. I have to boot back into the Microsoft Overlord's Windows 10 to utilize Oculus's software and most of the games I want to play on the Oculus Rift. It sucks. Don't like it. Wish it was different, but until... Those evil bastards over at Facebook changed their ways. <sighs> I'm just going to have to suck it up and boot back into Windows to play my Oculus. Software with hardware keys is number three. What do I mean by hardware keys? You're probably scratching your head going, Titus, have you lost your mind? And no, I have not. There's certain pieces of software in businesses that require what's called hardware keys. They plug into a USB port, there's a little uh, chip in them, and the hardware will not boot unless that chip is inserted into your computer. So uh, this is very, you, know, you don't see it very often. But a really, really expensive software typically runs and has that key that prevents people from switching over to it. And honestly, most of that really proprietary expensive software wouldn't work in Linux anyways unless they made a specific version of it. Um, I think DaVinci Resolve has one of these hardware keys on like their highest end option for professionals. But uh, they designed it also for Linux. But most of them you're booting into Windows and there's really not much you can do about that. Number four, CAD software for architecture. I don't know what it is about architecture and CAD software, but if you're using CAD, guess what? Better load up a Windows VM because you ain't getting that to work in Linux. I guarantee it. Don't try to do it in wine. That's just going to end in heartache and disaster. I could only work, imagine working on like a building design for like two hours and have it crash. No. It just, you're going to be using Windows. Number five, secure boot with a locked BIOS. There's only a couple computers that fit this profile, mainly real proprietary laptops, but they still exist out there. There's certain BIOSes that are locked down. Um, I imagine, I don't quote me on this, but a lot of Microsoft Surface computers, I'm sure they've probably locked it down so you couldn't be funny and load Linux on it. Although, I almost want to do that. <laughs> it would be a fun one to just have and say, hey, I have a Surface with Linux on it just to be a goof. But uh, needless to say, there are laptops out there with secure boot that you cannot disable or export the keys out of and can't do either one of those things. You can't load Linux on it. And number six, it breaks my heart to say this. All Windows games revolving with an anti-cheat system built in. PUBG, Fortnite, Scrum, 
there's a bunch of other ones out there, but those are the top two, really. PUBG and Fortnite is that what everybody cares about. And with those anti-cheats, it's not that we can't get the program to run, because we can. But we can't get the anti-cheat to like it, that it's running in a basic, basic emulator or... Uh, a compatibility layer if I want to appease the wine gods uh, you just can't get PUBG or Fortnite to go anywhere because of the anti-cheat situation right now hopefully this will change in the future um, and we'll see as it progresses because 2019 I think is going to be a big year for Linux gaming so let's get into the five myths that I constantly hear about why I can't switch to Linux from Windows. Number one, streaming. Can't stream Netflix. It's just simple lie. Install Google Chrome. You can install Mozilla and then do the Flash extension or plugin. It works. It's just a myth from five years ago. It might have been true, but it's not true today. Number two, bad hardware support. Yeah. <sighs> If you get a bleeding edge right out of the gate laptop from, I think last year I loaded up a laptop with Linux and the Wi-Fi didn't work on it. However, I updated the kernel and sure enough, that brand new Wi-Fi was just fine and loaded into the kernel. The fact I downloaded a distro that was using a six month year old kernel as a stable release it didn't have that brand new Wi-Fi on that laptop that just came out of the store. It, the hardware supports there, guys. It's just uh, you might not be doing a rolling distro or you're using a very old distribution that doesn't support that brand new hardware that hadn't quite made it into the Linux kernel for that version of Linux you downloaded. So it does work. Almost every generalized software works just fine. Number three, bugs. I can't believe I heard this one, but someone said Linux is buggy. What? Have you not used Windows? Do you not understand how buggy and just horrible and just layer after layer of crap Windows is? I could go on for, actually I have. <laughs> I think I have a video that I went on for probably 20 minutes in a straight rant and that was with me not continuing to rant for another 25 minutes because I had that much content to go about. <laughs> Linux, there's a couple bugs here. There's sure, everything has a bug. But man, you're really nitpicking on this one. I could probably go on maybe a couple minutes worth of complaining about Linux bugs that I've run into. But they're pretty darn small, especially when compared to Windows. Complexity so hard to learn all this new stuff well guess what everything that you install it's just learning something new it's not necessarily complex especially if you pick out like a linux mint it's pretty intuitive almost everyone can figure it out but uh it's there's a learning curve there whenever you switch from a windows based system to a linux one they fundamentally operate differently so yes you have to learn something new it's not going to be exactly like windows but to say it's just far too complex, that's like saying Windows is far too complex because Linux versions, pretty much the same. I mean, when you look at the complexities between the one and the other, it's just you've been using one for 15 years and now you have to learn something new. So to say it's complex, yes, there are Linux distributions that are complex. You know, if you do a vanilla Arch install, that's a little more complex for, especially for a new user. But a Linux Mint install, Man, that's way easier than Windows installs, especially nowadays. And number five, and the last one I'm going to touch on, support. Uh, back in the olden days, yes, support for Linux was an issue. But today, so many community sites have jumped up, and they're very, very good now. So uh, I'm running a subreddit. Chris Titus Tech. Uh, so look me up on Reddit. If you have a Linux-specific issue, make a post. I think we have have about 20 or 30 issues on there, all with solutions. I don't think we've had one where people were like, I can't fix it. Almost all of them have solutions. It's just finding those solutions for you and getting it to work on your system. So, um, you know, if you do have an issue, there's plenty of support. I just gave you my subreddit, but 
you don't need that. Honestly, if you look at the wikis from either Arch Linux, if you're using Arch or Arch-based distribution, or Ubuntu, or you know any of those, they all have their own uh, knowledge bases that you can easily tap into and forms to where you can ask a real person or a professional how to fix something. Windows, I mean, it's kind of all over the place. It's some, you know, you can find those things too, but it's very much the same as Linux nowadays. Linux might be a little more obscure, so there's less professionals, but we still exist. We're out there and we'll help you. So that's why people are stuck on Windows and the reasons I commonly hear that many people don't know about that maybe were true at one time but are no longer true. So those myths I wanted to also put out there just so people can get a grasp on how far Linux has come because it has come far. Because many of those myths I were, was saying five years ago, why I didn't switch to Linux sooner was a couple of those myths that I just said. Because they are just that, they're myths nowadays. And if you fall into that first six category, I'm not gonna tell you to switch to Linux because you obviously need those things. Or you might just do a dual boot if you really want to advocate and work on a good operating system. Uh, go ahead and dual boot and keep a Windows partition to do those things. But I just wanted to put this out there so everyone can know, hey, where is Linux now? Where is Windows now? What do I still need Windows for? And now you know.